It's October now, and fall is fast approaching. The leaves are getting ready to turn, and the days have become quite a bit cooler. In my past videos, I've shown you how we were clearing out some cedars in the front of our property to make room for the other trees so that they could grow larger. Now we've started clearing out cedars in the back of our property. It's an area that we never go to, and it's thick with cedars and black walnuts and hickory trees. So we're going to remove all of the cedars so that the hickory trees and the black walnuts can grow, and we can also grow some grass. We're planning on bringing our donkey and horse and putting them back here. It was my mom's horse named Streaker and her donkey named Millie, and we're going to bring those two here, and we're going to build them a little place to live in the back of the property. So we're clearing out that space and taking down all of the cedars. All right, so a lot of work has been done on my office. It should be done soon, and I can't wait to move in and show you guys the final space. Okay, since the nights are getting cooler, it's gonna start getting too cool for my tortoises to be out. So, we're getting ready to move these guys in. You got a leaf in your mouth, buddy. I am getting ready to build a new brooder coop within my barn. So let's go check that out. So this was an old calf barn before we lived here. And so I'm gonna clean all this out. It's just gross. Put some hardware cloth around this to protect from snakes and predators. And then it's gonna be the coop where my hens, like Sue, hatch their babies. All right, here's my new brooder coop. I'm turning into the stall into a brooder coop. So working on the hardware cloth. Uh, I got the bedding down in here. And there I'm gonna put a nest box in it for Sue. I had been missing my other little gray bantam for about a week or two and I was really worried about her and then I found her in here. She's in an old barrel. So I'm gonna have to get her out of that barrel and <laughs> get her in the brooder coop and hope that she still wants to sit on her nest. I don't think she needs to stay in that barrel with no warmth or anything. So we're gonna fix that for her.
Guys, here is my updated brooder coop. I have all the hardware cloth on. I've moved my hens into their new hen boxes into the coop. Um, I've put little board walk-ups for them because Sue only has one wing and she can't really get up in her. So she has to walk up this little, little walking board I put up there for a little plank. And then I just thought it would be easier for my little gray chicken to get in and out too with a little walk-up ramp, I guess. So here they are. Okay, it is Saturday. The video will be coming out tomorrow and I showed you earlier in the week, I think it was Monday or Tuesday, the progress on my office. Well, today is Saturday, like I said, and Chad is in here finishing it up. He thinks I'm gonna be able to move in tomorrow, which is Sunday. So hopefully I'll be able to start setting up my desk and getting things moved in here, but it's looking great. And he's just finishing up some of the trim work. Hey guys, all right, in today's video, I'm gonna throw in some cooking. Normally, you know, I would say probably every two, three, four videos, I'll throw in a recipe that I really love, something that I do a lot, or a technique, or something that I wanna share with you guys. So today, we're gonna do a cheap, not expensive, chuck roast, and we're going to sous vide cook this chuck roast. And if you watched some of my other videos, I think it was the one that I did about Lily, us having to say goodbye to poor sweet Lily. At the end, I did do a bit of a cooking segment on how to sous vide cook a ribeye. And sous vide is amazing. So the reason that I wanna do this chuck roast today is because I wanna show you how you can take a pretty cheap chuck roast, sous vide cook it, and it's gonna come out like prime rib. It is going to be so tender, so juicy and so amazing that you're going to be like, what? You can even buy a super cheap chuck or some kind of round roast that's, you know, six bucks. Sous vide cook it, and I'm gonna tell you, it will be like prime rib. So let's check this out today. We're gonna do, to get started, let's go ahead and take a look. I took this nice large chuck roast, and two days ago, I salted and peppered it and put all kinds of spices and seasonings on it. Whatever you wanna do, it doesn't really matter. It's kinda of up to you. I ground up some mustard seed and I've been marinating it. Sit, letting it sit in the fridge for a couple days. I'm gonna get it out, I'm going to dry it off and I'm going to wipe off all the seasonings that I've put on it. I'm going to sear it. I'm gonna scrape all this off, off so I can sear it and I don't want this to burn when I sear it, but we're not gonna throw all this away. We're gonna use it again. So, you know, just save it on a, Save it on a board like this. I'll use it. I don't want to waste it. See all that? After we sear it and put a nice brown on the edges, then we're going to sous vide it for 24 hours. All right, so let's get going. mustard seed crust that I put on this. It smells real mustardy when it's cooking. You know, I could probably stir this a little bit more. Again, we're not cooking it, you know, this is just to put a nice brown sear on it so that we can sous vide cook this bad boy. All right, we're giving it a good sear. Again, a sear is just to give it a nice browning. We're gonna actually cook it sous vide style. So you don't wanna, you know, cook it through. If you sear it, you just want a nice little crust to develop on the outside of your roast or your meat, whatever you're using. So here we go, look at this crust. I mean, that smells amazing. It smells unbelievable, just searing it. So wait till we sous vide this thing, you guys. I'm telling you, if you do not have a sous vide cooker, get one you can do i'm going to show you so many things you can do with sous vide cooking or just youtube it look at youtube you cannot believe what you can do with it <laughs> okay so give it a try all right we're going to set it here and let it cool because we're going to 
vac seal it, but we don't want it to be too hot when we vac seal it. So we're just gonna let it sit here and cool in all its beauty. Bag because the air actually kind of insulates it from cooking properly in the sous vide water. You're cooking it in a water bath at a very specific temperature. Um, and it's gonna cook it at that exact temperature for that exact time. The air pockets kind of, like I said, insulate the meat so that you don't get that full temperature on the meat. So you wanna get as much air out as you can, okay? Hey guys, we're gonna cook this for 24 hours at 133 degrees. So that long time is going to cook it at this perfect temperature all the way through, and it's gonna be cooked very evenly. So it's not gonna dry out. So let's check back tomorrow. I'm gonna put it in its water bath and then we'll check in tomorrow and we're gonna see what it looks like, all right? I'll see you guys tomorrow. Okay, I covered it with tin foil so we wouldn't lose moisture. And I don't have, I have a lid for this pot, but it won't fit with the sous vide cooker in it. So just tin foil it up so that I don't have to keep adding water. And I don't want the temperature to change me adding different water. So um, we're gonna let this sit overnight and I will see you guys tomorrow. I can't wait to show you what's gonna happen with this. It's super exciting. So if you love delicious meat anyway. All right, see you guys tomorrow. Been almost 24 hours since we put our roast in and it's been sous vide overnight, so we're gonna check it out, and you guys are gonna be really impressed. So, okay, let's make the mustard seed and rosemary crust, and I'm gonna use some fresh. Okay, let's make our rub. We're gonna add the peppercorns, all of the rosemary that I chopped up just a second ago, and some mustard seed. Okay, now I'm going to air roast this in my toaster oven for about 40 minutes at 450 and that's gonna give it a nice crust. Let's go ahead and get it in my little air fryer. Okay guys, as I mentioned, this was cooked all the way through. We just put it in the roaster to get a nice crust on it. Now it's out, so let's check it out. You ready? Nice and nice and pink and juicy on the inside. All right, time to taste. The sous vide roast beef sandwich. Oh, French dip sandwich, excuse me. Mm -hmm. Wow, that is tender. It's like a steak sandwich. Very good. The au jus is really good. When you sous vide, you can, it just gives you so much fresh au jus to use. That's what's cool about it. That's really good. The flavor's amazing. 
Thank you.